These students now will be looking at how we can measure the alignment scores. You already understand the fact that the scores cannot be uniform for all matches and mismatches and gap penalties. We need to appreciate the fact that several nucleotides and amino acids are more easily replaced by others while some others are not that easily replaced or substituted. Moreover, there are places where a gap that is an insertion or a deletion is very easily done while there are other positions within the molecules, DNA or proteins where this cannot be done easily. So how do we do that? So we measure the overall occurrence of amino acids or nucleotides and then we see which nucleotide can be replaced by which other more frequently or which amino acid can be replaced by which other amino acid more frequently. So this helps us to formulate a scoring scheme that is very useful for us. Let's review what we did in the needleman Munch algorithm. So this algorithm was a global alignment strategy and it helped us to start from the last element in the matrix and move to the first element. The important thing to note here is that we used a plus 10 for a match, a minus 2 for a mismatch and a minus 5 for gap penalty or space. Now we used these scores regardless of which nucleotide we were talking about. So all nucleotides were evaluated using the same match, mismatch and gap penalty. As I just mentioned, this should not be the case. Certain amino acids and nucleotides have a higher propensity to match or mismatch. So therefore we need to consider all of these and then assign a score. So in this case we had uniform scores or the same scores for these three. So let's see what can be done. So here I have a table for you in which 20 amino acids are listed on either side. So these are the 20 amino acids. And what is given in this matrix is that arginine, alanine, arginine and so on, they are represented by these scores. So alanine going to an alanine has a score of 5 and arginine converting to an arginine has a very high score. Similarly, if you look at serine, for instance here, it has a relatively low score of converting to another serine. So, you can see here that this amino acid has a very high score for conservation. So, the point I want to deliver here is that for substitution from one amino acid to another, you can use this score. So this does not have the same plus 10 score for a match as we were talking in the previous slide. So this substitution matrix has several values and each value in the table is the observed frequency of substitution between a pair of amino acids to the overall frequency of the two. So here is the relationship that has been used to compute each element in this matrix and you can use this matrix as a match or a mismatch score in your alignment problem. So the points to consider is that the matrix has both positive and negative scores as you just saw. 
So the positive is a positive score and the negative value is essentially a mismatch score. Moreover, because all the mismatches and matches are considered, this is a diagonal matrix and the upper diagonal matrix is symmetrical to the lower diagonal matrix. So in conclusion, using the formula that I just showed you briefly, if we can somehow build such scoring matrices and then keep these matrices with us while scoring the alignments, then this can be more reflective of the real biological understanding for each of these molecules and therefore the alignment results can be more meaningful.